back to my channel. So today is February finished pages. I'm filming this a day or two early just to get it up on the channel over the weekend for you all. I managed a little pile this month. Not loads and loads but I have been working on some watercolour pictures. So I'll move these out of the way and then we'll just get stuck in. So these aren't going to be in any particular order. It's just what order they are on my shelf and the way that I've pulled them out. So the first one I want to show you is this one from Hannah Carlson's Spirit Animals and I love this page, absolutely love it. I did a little bit of it on a colouring chart I believe and I used mostly the Faber-Castell Albert Durers and I was umming and ahhing about the background. If you watched that video you would have heard me go on and on. I was originally going to do just a black acrylic background but I changed my mind and I ended up using, let me just pull it out because I can't remember the name of it. For these areas in the background where there is watercolour, I've ended up basing the paper with this satin glazed liquid just to protect the paper a little bit, just to stop it from bleeding through or crinkling the paper too much. It's still crinkled but not as bad and it is meant for acrylic colours but I think it works well for watercolour paints. So that's what I ended up doing. It was Windsor and Newton, the student uh, watercolour paints in the background and I've just, if I just lift it up, the splash effects, I've just used the dry brush and then I've used the wet on wet here. That's that, what's it called again? The satin glaze liquid. That's how I managed to do the wet on wet. It wasn't great, but I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. These sparkly bits here that you can see, just shimmering in the light there, that is the chrome watercolour paint. I should have pulled all this stuff out, I don't know why I haven't, look like I've got it all to hand. And it is this one. That one just there, that silver one, you see it sparkle, how shiny it is. I thoroughly recommend that, I've done a full in-depth little review on uh, my channel of them paints renaissance paints i think they are renaissance colors so yeah they're really really nice really nice you see how shiny it is it really does look like liquid chrome it looks like chrome and i've used a little bit of white um arteza gel pen and then these details here and here i use the arteza gel pens as well but I think the watercolour paints just completely take over and outdo any gel pens that I used on this page I really really do enjoy using them paints but yeah I like the outcome of this I particularly still like all these leaves these seaweed and it was the first time that I tried this sort of um, colour on the skin like the turquoise green colour and I, I really do like that, I really do like, I'm happy with the, how that turned out. Now this was a PDF that I purchased off Etsy, I can't remember the name of the artist but I will link it down below if you are interested. And my printer, it's not going to pick up, we can see it a little bit, there's lines and I use the wrong paper as well. I've got two different types of paper that I use and I use the wrong one. But instead of printing it out again, wasting paper and wasting ink, I just use the paper, I just use the page. And I used, uh, what pencils was it? I think it was Prismacolor on this one. Prismacolor pencils and then a watercolor wash in the background. And then that shiny gold that you can see is the Windsor & Newton ink. I'm just checking that the lid is on before I tip it. In gold. It's just the really really nice gold that that see i wouldn't use it in large areas i've done that before and it looks quite patchy but with small areas like this like a crown and the jewel red, i think it really really does add a little extra something to the page even on a ring as well you see there i really enjoyed doing that one as well we've got a watercolour painting just a little itty bitty one because I'm just learning and I did a little galaxy and 
I wish that I didn't use, I used the KJ Designs by Karen watercolour paint over the top and I really wish that I hadn't. I think that that spoiled the, the effect that I was going for. But this is the Arteza watercolour little pad. But I've noticed with this, like this is watercolour paper and then it's smooth on this side and this side and then the next page it's textured. I would have liked it all to have been textured. So I'll probably only use half of this book. But nonetheless, I'm practicing. We have got another PDF, which is Mario the Boudic. And I printed this off on the Strathmore Tone Tan paper. Yes, it was. And I love the bow. I love how the bow turned out on this one with all that white gel pen. And the hair is, um, I know it's, it, it's a very similar colour to the background so it doesn't look like it's popping as much but if I'd gone in and painted the background a nice little roll of her painted the background in a different colour that her would have really really popped it's like a strawberry blonde with little pink highlights in it and then I went for a purple bear and a pastel purple jumper and then I was sort of at a loss what to do in the background so I just went with circles and stars and little hearts in gel pen and paint. That was quite a simple one to do but that burr, the fur on it, took me a long time each stroke. It took me a long time and isn't it button not so cute. So that's Mario the Budek. We've got Fragile Worlds by Kirby Rosans. This is all I'm seeing on YouTube at the minute, um, so I don't want to do too many videos. I don't want to, um, oh, what's the right word? I don't want to bombard you with uh, too much of this, but I have uh, worked a lot in this book. I've got two copies and I have done one in a different one as well. And I will tell you the reason why when I show you that book. Uh, so the first one that I did, is it in this one? No, it's that one, the tags fell down. I did do the front cover, just a little, is it turtle, toy toy? I think it's a turtle, I think the toy toys are the ones with the big shells and the little land, I think. <laughs> I've used Distress Ink in the background. I've not used my Distress Ink much this month. I'm sort of shying away from it, so it'll be moved around in the collection and it'll be, it'll be brought back out. I can't remember what pencils that I used, it possibly might have been Prismacolor. I'm not overly impressed with the shading on this. But I thought it was just a really, really quick one. They have added a little bit of moss and stuff on there, to be fair. And then we've got the frogs. I really, really like this page. I really like this page. And I'm glad I went with the back, black background. Just a, a matte black a background. I think it really did make the colours of the frogs and the purple leaves, flowers rather, pop. And then that these little bits here I don't know what I was going for but you see the smudges here that is pastel pencils and I just smudged it out with my finger but yeah I'm really pleased with how this one turned out I love how vibrant it is uh, next we've got the red panda which I did do on my channel from start to finish as a time lapse and I did it as a voiceover telling you what I was doing and this was really fun again. I think the most of this was done with watercolour. The, either the Windsor, New, Windsor and Newton or the Holbeins. I'm not quite sure. And then the Americana white acrylic paint for all the different snow. And I think I went in with a little bit of pencil detailing. But not a lot. Because fur is not my strong point. As with the burr. That's more of a... It's meant to be a teddy bear. It's not a real burr. I feel more intimidated when it comes to like portraits of real animals. So yeah, I probably could have done that for a little bit better, but hey ho, not the end of the world. Uh, what's the other one I did here? This is another one that I did on the channel, so see what I mean? I didn't want to do every every single one on the channel, but I did do this one. And the only thing with this, and it still irritates me now, is I did this with Inktense. I didn't do the the background, I did that with Neil Colour 2 because I've used ink tents in a background before in big black areas and it's really streaky and I don't like it. So I stick to smaller pictures, not smaller details in the pictures. 
Now I wish I did the skull in a different colour. When I went in with that ink tent I'd already put the colour down and then instantly I didn't like it. But I wasn't not finishing the page because of that. But yeah I wish I'd gone in with a creamy beige colour. Really disappointed in that one. Really disappointed. But it's not the end of the world. That's the other one that I did. I did get some bleed through and quite a lot of warping with this one. And I'm not pleased with this one either. And this is the Galapagos. Oh, what was it called? Galapagos Guana. I don't want to. What page are we? 71. I just want to check if I was right actually. 71. Um, marine iguanas. Marine iguanas inhabit the Galapagos Islands. So I was nearly right. I was nearly right. Because yeah, it reminds me of David Attenborough. But I hate that I put the gel pen here. Absolutely despise that actually. And the reason that the paper warps so much is because I use so much water. I use salt on the sky while the watercolour was still half and half wet and dry. And I've used Prismacolour for a little bit of shading. I'm really dis disappointed in myself with this one. I really don't like it. I've even gone over some of the clouds with that. And yeah. So let's just move on to the next one. We've got a Hannah Lynn one. Now this was a whip from last month that I finished off a couple of weeks ago. And it's the bunny. I thought with me seeing all these Easter eggs in the supermarket I fancied doing this picture. And I really do love how it turned out. I love the vibrant colours. I'm pretty sure yeah, most of it is based with alcohol markers. And it was the Ohuhu alcohol markers and then Prismacolor for everything else and a bit of white Arteza gel pen. I'm really, really pleased with how this one turned out. I love the blush on the cheeks. Even the grass in the background, I really like how I've done that. And the trees and everything are just really vibrant. It makes me happy, this page. I can't remember what boot this is out of. I'm terrible because I don't write down the name of the boots, I'm bending them together and I'm forgetting but it's her most recent one will I be able to remember the name, is it through, it's not through the decades or holidays, is it holidays? Whimsy holiday girls or something like that, I'm pretty sure that's what it is because there's a boxing day one at the back and a Christmas one yeah definitely is, yeah so that's the Hannah Lynn one I've got some more watercolour paintings now I'll show you the very first one that I do remember doing and I followed Kirsty Partridge's uh, tutorial I'm uh, a patron of hers and I followed her tutorial see I even turned it and dated it I'm like that proud <laughs> and it probably took about two and a half to three hours of me following this tutorial pausing it and doing what she was doing but we've got the galaxy first with the trees and I realised I was using the wrong brush so the next time I do that I need a different brush because the fat trees and they should have been thin and then we've got a sunset which I'm not overly happy with how this turned out this this one is all watercolour with um, watered down acrylic for the, the splashback and the stars and then this one's watercolour and um, pastel pencils on this one and then just watercolour and then the watered down acrylic on this one that is the winter scene I'm so proud of myself <laughs> for doing this this one has been out on my um, little boot shelf at the side of me practically all month I was that proud of it especially this one especially this one and then that one and then I could have done better with that one but all in all I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm definitely going to be doing another couple of her or following her tutorials because it was really easy really easy to follow fun to do just make sure that you've got a couple of hours spare uh, I'll stick with this one because again this one was another of her tutorials and I messed up the bottom bit a little bit you see the acrylic but I'll take that off so don't look at that bit if I just pull it down you can't see <laughs> <laughs> that looks better from about there. I added too much of the, the black at the bottom. 
but it's a galaxy background with a moose and a smoke coming out of its mouth and again I followed her tutorial step by step and it took me a couple of hours to do this one as well and I did print this off what's the watercolour paper called? Well, let me just check I'm probably not going to be able to find it now I want it There it is. Why is it always the last one that you're looking for? It is the Archers and it's the cold pressed. That's the uh, paper that I printed on. And apparently that's one of the nicer papers that you can use. And I really enjoyed these. I found uh, watercolour painting is really fun to do now. I messed up the moose a little bit. He's got his backside pokes up in the air too much. And I made his mouth come out too much and his ears too pointer. But apart from that... <laughs> Apart from that, I'm happy with it. And there's like spatters and yeah, cool galaxy background. Now these next two, so there's two on this one page. I didn't follow a tutorial, they're actually that way around. I didn't follow a tutorial, I just googled a picture of galaxies and then tried to use them as a reference myself. So if I just show it you like that, that was the first picture that I googled and yeah i really like how this one turned out i think i used again the kga designs by karen can you see it sparkling um this planet is a little bit messed up i did too much water i think but the actual final outcome i'm, I'm pretty pleased with and then this one was a separate one i just googled galaxy backgrounds and this here the paint was still wet and i'd moved it i'd pulled my finger across it so I had to go with it and make it into a shooting star which looks a bit ridiculous but there was nothing I could do it was already down but it, you've got the pink going into the purple into the blue I thought that was really really neat like I said I'm thoroughly enjoying doing these does it look better that way around it probably looks better that way around actually with the shooting star coming down so yeah and the very last watercolour painting that I've done is this one that I used another tutorial book. What was it called? It was something like painting animals. I can't quite remember. And I did a little whale. And my son said that I've left too much white in the background. Thanks, Lois. I've used the wet on wet technique here and uh, the salt method. But yeah, I'm really pleased that this one turned out. It wasn't so much a. Uh, in-depth tutorial like the other ones that I've followed it was just pictures in a book and you do this so if there was any problems you were you obviously had to fix it yourself there was not much writing to be honest a lot of pictures but yeah that's my whale anyway my galaxy whale uh, the, the last page that I've done is again in fragile worlds now this book I'm keeping just for pencils, just pencil work in this one and then the other one's going to be the mixed media uh, dry work should I say because I've just realised I've used pan pastels I was struggling with the background on, on this if I'd used it in the mixed media book I would have used acrylic paint but I'm trying to use that one for wet and this one for dry to keep the, the book looking neat and I did the little fruit bat I did um, look for a reference picture on this and what's quite funny about this page, I'm on a couple of groups on Facebook, uh, Kirby Rose and that couple of colouring groups um, and they chat on there about new boots that are coming out etc etc and someone had actually found the reference picture of this that Kirby had actually used to draw it. Now I, I understand that uh, artists use reference pictures but I don't know how this person found it so easily. But they, they put this picture in the black and white against the picture, um, the reference picture, yeah. And I'd never seen that before, I'd never seen the actual reference picture before. I added a little bit of red to the wings as well though. But this one took me ages, it took me about four or five days because it was 15 minutes colouring here, 40 minutes here, 10 minutes here. It really did take me a long time to do this one. Isn't that one a beautiful page as well? I've seen this one done so many times on Facebook with a beautiful water effect. So that's that one. And I've just got one whip at the moment. 
from Anastasia Hello phone Anastasia Ella Call the Reva. I always struggle saying her name When Dragons Dream and I've just started this one last night just with the Faber Castell uh, Albert Dura watercolour pencils nothing else so I've done the shading of all the the berries and that one leaf and I've wrote down the pencil that I used for the green shading so I know when I come back to it later on or tomorrow or whenever it may be and all the pencil colour I will show you as well my diamond painting so I'll have to just move all this and then bring you back so this is the custom diamond painting that I'm working on at the minute and this is from Spell Queen I've managed to do that portion all the way down there and if I just lift it up all this bottom section here like so so I was hoping to get this done by next week we'll see we'll see because I did this portion here in probably about an hour and a half which wasn't too bad so I'm going to work on that this week and hopefully get another good chunk of it done with the outside section all just being one block colour I find that quite quick and easy to do uh, but yeah that's everything that I've worked on and there's a bead popping out right there and I've got my pen right here I'm just checking that none of the others have uh, come out so that is everything that I've been working on this month hopefully next month will be a little bit more productive when it comes to art and my YouTube oh I just will quickly show you as well because it's so cute Isabel's little artwork you see her hand print I think that's some sort of paint I'm not sure what they didn't tell me how cute that I'll just keep it behind my uh, paintbrushes so if you did enjoy the video please do like it if you're new please subscribe and I will see you in the next one very soon bye bye